right, and we are jumping in. Hello to everyone who is starting to join. Hello to everyone watching the recording. This is Opke's overview of the Oracle 24A release. We're going to give everyone a few moments to jump on, get situated. Again, we are Opke. I'm Isabel Hendricks, Content Marketing Manager, and we are the industry's leading test automation platform for test automation for a variety of industries, packaged apps, and use cases. Thank you so much for joining us. We have our VP of Product Solutions, Dimpy Sharma, with us today, and she is an absolute expert with so much experience and so much in the field understanding of how these releases really impact your Oracle environment, what you need to know beforehand to be prepared, and how you can test specifically and strategically to have the easiest, fastest update possible. Again, we go through the releases and the notes directly from Oracle to bring you an overview of the information that is most helpful. Um, this webinar is being recorded and we will send out a recording, so don't worry if you think you've missed anything. If you have a question, you can put it in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if you would like a demo or you'd like more information after the webinar, please feel free to reach out to our team directly or visit our website at www.opkey.com. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Dimpy and thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Isabel. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining in the session today. So we're going to break down the new release from uh, Oracle that's coming up 24A. And uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things, how that affects the Oracle update this time across different modules, the key areas in general, financial, supply chain, uh, different modules that your organizations have implemented it for. As part of the session, we're going to talk about the schedule on the updates. How does it look like and when does it give that impact? The examples of some of these changes and how does that make an impact on the end-to-end -end business processes and what needs to be done from a testing perspective, more best practices. How Opki helps in this regard, followed by a quick demonstration and, and question and answers toward the end. So let's... Jump right in. So Oracle from an update perspective has three major cadences, including the SOAK, which um, which is right here, the January's cadence, Feb cadence, and the March cadence. If you are a customer who's opted for payroll specifically, you have a different cadence that operates. So in terms of changes, and especially from a testing perspective, there are a couple of things that are very important from how do you manage that particular schedule in order to validate the patch. If we really talk about validation, it starts from a readiness of when you are approaching the patch. And, and this is where we are. We want to talk about how that changes are going to reflect upon the, the update, reflect upon the Oracle instance. How does it going to affect in, in an entirety on the business processes that your system is configured to support. In that same aspect from 24A, in general, from an ERP perspective, there are a couple of changes um, that, are, that are expected to happen. What we have done as, as a product is we look at different release notes, we look at all the information of that's coming up, and then we convert them into the changes that would particularly affect the business processes which are aligned with how your system is progressing in a more uh, ground and, and practical manner. In the same aspect, um, those changes then accommodates from a validation perspective as well, from, from more business process monitoring. And when you look at these changes and how does it affect your business process, you particularly make that change in those forms and in those business processes to accommodate that particular change. So it's part of your business process. It's part of your uh, change management documents. It's part of your test scripts. It's part of your um, approach and planning that you need to do for that particular update. Now, let's, let's go more technical into what these changes have uh, as part of these ERPs. Number one, in general and overall, um, Redwood is a is a new update that is going to happen. It's only started last couple of patches and now it's actually coming into, into its own, right? So next couple of patches, you're going to really see how those changes turn into and mold into 
a lot of those instance business processes per se. So, for example, this particular change approvals essentially as a section on the BPM work list is now separated out. So this is a new category outside of the BPM work list where you will have approval tasks specifically. You can go ahead, make certain changes onto approvals, approve, reject, um, defer it for a later time. All of that can be done under approvals and notifications. There's no, um, no, no requirement of kind of going into the BPM work list and then making those approvals happen. So you can directly jump into it. Now, from a financial perspective, more from forms, right? So there is one of the changes on the merged cost, cost, which is this particular column right here, which has been introduced. And that's more to kind of display all the source and across all the source line pages, asset pages, line pages, where it would just merge and then accommodate all of that into one particular column. Um, another change is using the routing number. Now you can look up for a supplier having multiple accounts and look that up using a routing number, even if it has five different accounts that is being operated for by that particular um, supply holder. Another change is under subledger accounting, and this is more connected with your business process, right? So if I if I talk about this particular change where subledger accounting is now going to be done directly and automatically rather than actually selecting a or scheduling a process and when that particular process executes and that particular transaction happens on, on subledger accounting, right? This happens automatically. Now think of it from a testing and a validation perspective. All the tests that we have created were aligned with the business processes and this time it is happening automatically. So you need to make certain changes which are more transactional, more connected to the forms. When you look at an update and when you look at uh, a certain change in the patch on the instance where your entire business is holding, is making certain changes which is directly impacting your transactions. So you can look at these changes which are more process oriented and form oriented directly make that change or tweak that change into the business process and you're up and running. So that's the intent that we start this entire release exercise for. Um, another change, if you see here, uh, payables exception report, this has been added. It was, so you can directly look into any exception that come into invoices, look at this particular report. So this is another process validation update that should immediately go into as a testing script or a test case or a test scenario should go into your test suite immediately as part of account payables. Now coming to HCM, HCM um, is particularly, even if I talk about Redwood, right? These changes have directly started with HCM more like any different changes, right? Even at the time of uh, more classic and responsive UIs, the changes first got effect to HCM, human capital, more prone to people-oriented management module. And that's the, the major reason it kind of gets that first hit uh, upfront to get a view from directly from the users and more external users. So this time around, it's the same. So Redwood Journeys is introduced and this has just clubbed all the checklist and onboarding sections. Essentially, whichever section would have hierarchies and would have uh, one particular section, and then you have a subsection inside of it, then you have a sub subsection inside of it. Whenever there are hierarchies, they have just accommodated that into Redwood journeys. And the purpose of that is to make very, very uh, customizable to how your business organization is operating. Right. And that's the whole intent of Redwood as a whole as well, is to allow the business users to make the change how their business is working and how that is structured, right? So you have a page, which is journeys, which is more Redwood oriented. So the look and feel would be um, a little different. It would be, it would allow you to customize things a bit. It will uh, help you to make it more customized form as well and, and things like that. So that is changed and that is introduced, right? So this is uh, a key. And I think the rec recommendation would be to include more opt-in enhancements, which have the Redwood UIs and Redwood forms. And the reason for that would be as early as 
you you adopt all of these changes it would be much easier to kind of get into that automated mode and the intent of transforming and making this change into the oracle instance because three updates down the line at the end of 2024 when you try to get all of these enhancements into your uh, oracle instance you will find that your oracle, oracle instance has completely changed it would be just different from anything that you started a couple of patches before right so the recommendation would be to start and start opting these updates as early as possible because these are smaller changes but uh, over a period of time it will just compound and just overall change the whole look and feel of how it would operate another change would be an interview title not a not a major issue but um, these labels and form related changes just like slowly change the course of how your test scripts and how your business processes look um supply chain didn't see a lot of changes this time i think uh, there were there were a couple of fields like priority fields has been added to uh, agreements and the blanket requisitions and stuff like that and there are a couple of changes on the look and feel on uh, managing your inventories and locators and all of that so this is the task list where a couple of look and feel have been changes changed now this is important where you could just search an entire um supplier details by their tax taxpayer id rather than different annotations and different unique ids being uh, suggested to them and this is this is just by this is just for preventing any kind of dupl duplicacy that happens when it comes to contractual and taxing and everything that related to accounting and financials right so just to avoid that this has been introduced so it's very very um process changing another key changes that you can reopen and awarded uh, and and completed negotiation so that's pretty important so you are able uh, earlier you were not able to do that and that would just require to kind of create a duplicate record or maintain it in a different way or find ways which are not aligned to the business process but i think now you can just re reopen a completed negotiation with uh, certain uh, steps which are important to just complete and reopen the entire reward and negotiation it's important with that um, i think the key ones are done and the overall intent that we wanted to you know get off from uh, this this particular these particular changes across all of these modules again just to stress more is to kind of get a hint of how your business processes are progressing what are the key changes that are coming in how should we approach our test suites in a different manner to achieve um much greater results in this particular patch to get more uh, out of you know less amount of time spent into the test suites how can we make it more effective at the end of the day it's not about uh, a lot of business processes being tested but how efficiently we are testing and how are we really hitting on the the hot spot area so that's the intent and with that we are also releasing an advisory uh, document so you'll get a copy of it with this um, with our recording as well and um, as you see we are we are only focused on something which is more process oriented how your business processes are structured and where it matters most and all of those changes are defined to the t so you can really get a hang of what these changes are going to do to your business processes now let's uh, you know this is where we want to go we want to talk about what are the best practices of testing we want to make sure that anything that needs to to be done to validate that you have a successful production release has to happen with each and every patch so um best practices again there there are there are key um key steps that we have followed over a period of time across all of our customers to make them successful and it has worked beautifully for all of our customers and and this is what it is to have a preparation on the test environment one has to be uh, you know complete strategy and plan in place of when are you going to do your p2t when are you going to refresh the environment when it is going to be available for the testing users how are you setting up your users what are the roles have those roles and user accesses being defined in place if there are configurations that need to be made such as the approval setup such as uh, the code combination setup and things like that has that that been done 
as part of your pre check um if manual testing is in place are the key people available and even if manual testing is not in place do we have the folks who are responsible for the environment management if anything goes wrong from an environment perspective or access perspective security access controls do we have the key folks available right at the time uh, what are the ers that we are looking to implement have we looked at the release notes have we looked at the advisories uh have you understood what are the changes that are coming up in this particular release and uh, cre- really created a map or plan of what are we want to what do we want to implement what do we want to leave in this particular patch what is important for your business to kind of have implemented and do you have the right uh, test scenarios in place to be able to test that when you opt in how is it going to merge and adapt with all the business processes that are ongoing so that is important do we have the security Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, just before you move on too far, we have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Um, the question is from Chris. Will onboarding cease to work once 24A is applied? And is any additional configuration required to migrate to journeys? Um, I think for journeys, uh, you don't require any kind of configuration. It's a forced update. But... uh what you need to do is you need to con- you need to just have it um in order to operate that particular form you need to go and select certain drop downs to be able to see what form comes up it will be different for different users so for example it is going to be um as part of onboarding right so if you select a certain form it would take you to uh, an x form that is part of your whatever you have configured till now so it is going to work as is but say there is a custom field that you create just for redwood or inside of redwood it it gives you a plus icon where you can select a custom field and you can make a selection that uh, hey when i uh, when you see an employee with this particular category you just uh, skip these x number of levels and just move to this particular form these could be conditions that you configure right on that particular form and that would require your intervention wonderful thank you super so um and and really i think from security users perspective if those security users are aligned uh, do we have the right integrations in place if we have the integrations in place how do we prepare the data for those integrations um in the sense if there are certain apis that need to be hit for that particular integration to happen do we have those uh, uids in place if we have those now in terms of testing checklist one needs to be extremely sure of which test suite to be executed at what particular time right so there is an end to end regression test suite there is a p1 sanity test suite there is a risk based sec- test suite there is an integration test suite and the timing and prioritization of those uh, test scenarios as part of those test suite is also very important so that needs to be in place before before time doing an impact assessment whether you you want to do it automatically or you want to do it manually but just creating an impacted report of how that particular change is going to affect your business processes and what are the key areas and key business processes that need to be tested first is very very important rather than just getting into the entire test suite of testing the like like 100% of everything that is there in the system it's not going to give more pointed results so that is extremely important with this some of the key aspects of how do we prepare our environment so um you know when you when we would do a non prod environment update when do you do a sanity check of that particular environment how does it go into your production environment and stuff like that the same exercise we need to do for your p2t environment before it gets available for the actual patch testing so i think we covered most of it but essentially just to reiterate this planning and re predetermining anything that is to be done from a checklist perspective security roles access environment and prioritizing the tests is very very important before you actually start the testing and cannot stress enough to understand what are the issues that have been fixed in this particular patch what is coming up and just being prepared on 
um really from a patch perspective at the time of patch when you're actually in the schedule it's only time to just validate if everything is working as expected and there's no other time to kind of assess if that needs to be added or if there's anything that needs to be appended as part of your test suite we um have been working with multiple customers over time there was there were more than um 50 customers that we have you know patch certified and they're using key business processes they're using key um, features like process mining they're using um test data analysis in the form of configuration mining they're using real time impact analysis platform to assess what has changed immediately from opkey and that has been a key in certifying our customers in just 3 days right so 3 to 4 days when you have your patch certification done you can then get on with a lot of things that can be covered in the next one week one one and a half week you can um talk to oracle support you can raise multiple issues you can think about how do you want to enhance the system and things like that and really get the most of these uh, patches once your enterprise actually scales and covers more and more stuff in terms of your modules and business processes um opki comes in 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 multiple places i think the idea of a patch certification really comes from just making easy making things very very easy and um just free up the business users from the recurring stuff for of, of patch updates and i think just focus on how you can improve the business organization in more more broadly in terms of your uh, entire and planning and and the system so how do we make sure that this is completely effective and more easy for them is how easily it is to set up how it is set up from a systems perspective and a product perspective and this is a good merge of both of these aspects right so we are talking about a process here but this process at the back end is supported by an and a continuous evolving um, product which is also ai enabled which is also extremely erp and oracle intrinsic which is the understanding of oracle and how that erp works is at the center of everything and then it is accommodated by different other features and technology and advancements that go around it right and then it is supported by question uh, mm -hmm. sorry not to interrupt uh, just before you move on um the question is what is this conversion included in upcoming fusion applications conversion to new oracle cloud console for oracle cloud which is included in our 23a quarterly update um what is this conversion in a sense um i'm sorry was it that a question oh we might need clarification from whoever asked this the question is what is the conversion included in upcoming fusion applications conversion to new oracle cloud console for oracle cloud which is included in our 23a quarterly update yeah i'm going through the question right now um seems like this is more on um what is the conversion including in the applications conversion um i think we need to go a little bit more into the the question reshma bana we got some announcement sent by um reshma i think this was sent by oracle yeah yes this was sent by oracle and i think this is more around the um the the applications conversion i think in the sense of these uh, you know accounting and uh, conversions and stream i think it would be related to that particular task it would be more more technical i think it would be more related to that particular functionality we might need to go into that announcement i think i, I might need to go into that announcement and maybe um have a discussion with the module owner as well to understand and comment more on this reshma i think we can connect um, offline you can reach out and and we can talk about this in more detail to kind of get a hang on these um, this needs to be answered in more detail and look at the announcement first great 
Great. And for anyone who has um, technical or business specific questions, our experts are also available to reach out to afterward. Absolutely. And I think, um, and then let's, I think all of these things, right, whatever we can um, help with in terms of the PAD certification is then linked to how we can, um, you know, get the most out of these PAD certifications in terms of your business benefits. If there are X number of people in HR and IT and different other modules who are now freed up from this recurring task, they can then contribute to a more risk-free uh, blueprint and understanding of how these patch certification will happen. So you, from from Opki's perspective, you get a good blueprint of what you have tested, uh, what are the risk areas, what is an actual impact assessment, what are the data that needs to be used and what has been used as part of your testing practice. And then you, when you go forth from that particular patch, they can, you can start using it for training and understanding purposes um, internally and kind of get the most of uh, this entire playbook and and blueprint. Um, what our customers are also seeing that their test coverage is also constantly increasing. When they get each and every update and that gets translated into more business process oriented um, approach and test scenarios that immediately get submerged into the previous test suite and over a period of time, it just becomes a, a compounded, more comprehensive regression suite that is run across all the different patches and your entire ERP system and constantly monitoring any change that would come across um, all the different areas and modules. What it is hooked with is a, a self-configured system. We're going to look at a, um, you know, we're, we're going to have a quick demonstration into how that particular process looks. Feel free to drop in any more questions that you guys have. And uh, at the end of this demo, I'm going to talk to talk through some of the questions that you guys have. So how do we achieve it is, is more interesting because as I said, it's a mix of systems and processes and then that is supported at the back end within product which is enabled by technology, which is looking at ERP, which is looking at how you can make the most of this particular data and technology and then create something which is more useful for the business owners, which they have been using doing for years but in a more manual fashion so what you're looking here on the screen is a process mining enabled technology that understands that what what have you configured in your erp system at one particular point translates it into business processes those business process will have relevant test data that you can you can then use and then execute those business processes across multiple systems and environments so what that means is that you understand how your configurations is looking. So for example, at the end of, uh, at the start of patch, if you have enabled X number of configurations and say in that entire quarter, you have enabled, um, you know, five to 10 different configurations. And now you want those configurations to be converted into test scenarios, that data to be included in your test scripts. Unless we understand how your system looks like, we won't be able to address that. So if you look at the, the screen right now, Opki would understand what the configurations look like, mine those configurations. Now these configurations look like this. These configurations would be converted into data combinations and those data sets will be hooked to your test scenarios. And since we beforehand understand what your business processes would look like in this particular patch, you will also get a suggested and recommendation of what you should be testing. So if you look at this part of the screen, suggestions, it would give you these X number of test scenarios should be included at this particular patch. So you create a test suite, especially the, for that particular patch. You have the data set automatically created. This data set and these scenarios will together create a test script, which is up and running immediately for your particular patch. And that is compounded with the regression suite that you have been testing. You can then convert these test cases into run lists that actually goes, converts them into test suites. Select what is the data that you want to operate on. So we can select the data sets and then add it into a test suite and then put it out for execution.
more importantly when you need to understand what's the actual change between the two environments you actually need to create an impact report that impact report immediately gives you an analysis of what has changed in the system how does that change looks in terms of that particular form so you can have a one to one comparison of what has changed earlier how does it look now in terms of your transactions what are the different tabs that have changed what is the workflow that has changed in terms of an impact analysis report you can then make the changes automatically into the test scripts so that's a self healing technology more functional and technical technical because it's able to analyze what's changed from an oracle cloud application perspective from the core technology it is able to identify what are the functional changes it will give you the test scripts that are changed because of that particular update you can put them you can get them into a test suite put a more impacted and risk based test suite and then put them out for execution at first that could be your first test script right after sanity that you should execute in order to get an understanding of what are the p0 scenarios that are affected in the system and then that can be just uh, comprehended with all the end to end regression suites that you have uh, we have a question yeah um mohammed asks and the data the data set should be created by me or opkey these data sets get created automatically by opkey mohammed so what we do is we when we mine we mine the exact logs the transaction logs so we have the transaction data um and then we also mine the configurations what are the different setups the major setups the master data and then the mix of both will become relevant test sets that you should be testing with right so that the test data sets that we create and that's that created by opkey automatically i hope that answers wonderful thank you and if anyone else has any questions we've come to the q and a part so please feel free to type them into the chat Okay, here's a question here. Um, broadly speaking, what does Opkey do in terms of security and ensuring that data used to make tests is kept private? From a security perspective, um, we do a lot of things. In now, um, I can talk about different certifications and the security practices that we have in place. So, right from GDPR to Twenty-seven thousand one to twenty-seven thousand eight, and and things like that. So um, we are GXP compliant. We, but at the core of everything, from security perspective, we are hosted on AWS Opkey as a platform. We use salt-based encryption, the highest encryption that is there, AES two five six, to make sure all the data that comes in from a customer's perspective is absolutely secure, and is on our. um servers and it is in encrypted format from a transactional perspective when we use the data for testing and validation we create all the pii information as part of a test data so that's a test data that's transactional data that is created uh, or master data that is created by the platform we don't use the the data that is already existing in the system uh, two aspects here one it helps with the security and pii it also helps with the the approach that we use as as part of our accelerators as part of our um uh, mantra from a platform perspective which is to give a data driven approach to our customers and to make sure that they are there's absolutely no manual intervention when they are executing their test suites so it helps in both ways um as i said from an encryption perspective everything is highly encrypted to kind of use these data we have multiple hosting options as well so in case there is anything that cannot be hosted on public saas it could be hosted on on, uh, on an on premise like behind your firewalls it could be hosted in a private cloud infrastructure perspective as well where we just chalk out a different cell all together on um our our data centers just for our customer so we could use multiple other ways but at the 
at the core the data encryption security compliance certification everything is in in place wonderful answer thank you um we have another question from mohammed he asks can we see the output of the testing case that you demoed no um i'm sorry is about ending the question uh, the question is can we see the output of the testing case that you demoed i believe not i believe that demo is pre-recorded yeah the demo is pre-recorded but um yeah, why not? You can see the the output of each and every test script that you execute. And those are more in the form of validation reports. And there are multiple reports that you get out of it. What, what we executed was uh, hiring of an employee. And the process that I showed you was an entire end-to-end -end process of hire to retire. And that particular process would have multiple uh, test scenarios into it. So hiring of an employee would be one of it. And... Uh, and why not? You can you can have multiple reports out of it. And the output of the report would be uh, that employee would be hired and there would be a validation report on each and every screen that you went by. And then uh, the result of the validation, whether it is success or failure. Beautiful. And I believe we have time for one more. Um, the question is, is it necessary to go through the advisory doc or does Oracle provide information automatically? So I think more specifically, they're asking what's the best way to get information about the upcoming changes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I think um, there is, no, Oracle would not provide it automatically other than the release notes. So release notes is the only way that they give information of what's coming up and um, what are the known issues that have been fixed. Now, why is it important to read the advisory and specifically from Opki is that um, how would you understand from the release notes what are the changes that are going to affect in your um, system and your business organization and how it is relevant to one particular module and one particular process unless you really go into T of it uh, otherwise, it's like a 400-page document, which nobody would even bother to kind of go into that particular detail, right? Unless there are certain issues that you really come across and you want to really go into or deep dive into. What we try to do is just take away that heavy lifting out and give you a more perspective of what and how those business processes would look like. Some of the examples that I gave in the webinar, at the start of the webinar as well. Um, and... You can just accommodate some of those changes immediately into your test scenarios and your test suites and just make it more uh, more transactional and business process oriented. I think that's the that's a more intent, bigger intent of it. Outside of that, if I really talk about from Oracle, you can definitely go through release notes. This it's it's quite comprehensive. And that would give you your help, but it wouldn't really give you information automatically. Absolutely. And for anyone who does want to see that advisory, we have it for free for anyone uh, to download on the Opkey website. We also have an overview blog, and it will also be emailed out to participants of this webinar. Uh, we have one last question here from Mohammed. He says, thanks so much. Are you planning to have a deep dive demo soon? Why not, Mohammed? We can do... Um a good deep dive demo for uh, for you and your team. And I think let's go ahead, please reach out to us um, outside of the webinar and then we can, we can talk about a deep dive demo. Absolutely. Also feel free to check out um, Opkey's YouTube page, our recorded webinars on our site and a wide variety of downloadable content and blogs. So we are at time for today. We want to thank everyone so much for taking the time to come and join the webinar. Again, please reach out to info at opki.com um, or submit a form on the website. And we're so happy to be able to provide this service to all Oracle Cloud users. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Dimpy, and have a wonderful day.